Hi everyone, welcome to Justin's Reads and on today's episode we are talking about a book by Paul Arden and it's titled It's Not How Good You Are, It Is How Good You Want To Be It's Not How Good You Are, It's How Good You Want To Be So essentially, he is just trying to tell you that what you are going to become the future that you have in mind is not going to be determined by wh- how good you are today is that thing that you're trying to achieve or is that thing that you're trying to become but it's determined is how how good do you want it how much do you want it how, how how much is your desire for that thing that you have determined of your plan of you or you have penned down to do in your life you know he begins by saying that the people that are successful today, look around at the people that have made it in different industries. They are not notably uh, educated, they are not notably handsome, or they are not um, notably talented at the things that they do. It was their desire, it was their decision that they made uh, to become that thing that uh, um, they ended up becoming. Their success came from the inside, from a decision, from a desire, from a good desire of becoming that thing that they want to be. So if you want to become something, your desire or your need has to be that great. It has to be beyond the ordinary person so that the steps that you take will be commensurate to the kind of desire that you have, to the kind of passion that you have for that thing, you know. And he said um, the the beginning uh, part of this whole scenario of, of this whole ladder of success, it starts with a vision. What do you want to become? At, at least know what you want. At least have an idea of what, of the kind of person that you want to become. At least, let's, let's start there. What do you want? What do you be, want to become when you have um, established that? The next thing is how good do you want it to become do you just want it or you really want it or you really 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 want it how good is your desire it's it, that's what's going to determine essentially the steps that you're going to take and the the passion that you're going to put in the things that you that you want to become or the becoming that person it's going to be driven by the level of desire that you have for that thing that you want to become And um, he spoke about the fact that (laughs) he was talking about creatives, for example. He said, um, they need a problem to solve. They need chaos uh, in order for their creative minds to work. So it actually reminded me of a message that I once had by uh, uh, Pastor Chris. He said, I welcome trouble, you know. I I want trouble. He said, he becomes uneasy when things around him... um, are just working perfectly fine there's no issue there's no problem there is he said he becomes he becomes uneasy he welcomes trouble because in trouble that's where his excellence his, his virtues his perfections are actually are, are tested or are brought to light so when you see things that are dark around you it's an opportunity to shine it's an opportunity to manifest it's an opportunity to become because you can only develop you can only bring solution when there is a problem so welcome challenges welcome problems welcome trouble it's uh, it's how you are going to become that person that you want to be and this is he says um all of us all of us wants to be good but you should be that person that has learned to accept criticism. You say it. Uh, you can always get uh, uh, good praises from people around you. If you want, if you want enough praises, if you want uh, enough good to be said about you, just go around the people that you love, that you know. But um, they will tell you the things that you want to hear. They will tell you about uh, the things that you. You already have in mind that you want to hear but more often than not 
these are the things that are not going to make you any better be open to criticism if people come to you let them let them be able to to tell you your real strength your real weaknesses if you present a piece of work for example like this video that i'm putting right now i can go to my friend i'm like hi how was the video then my friend was like mm, it was very nice it was beautiful it was all that but that's not gonna make me any better right i you should if i go to another person that is might not be my friend that it, that is open to give me an honest feedback on the things that on, on this uh piece of video that i've made i might come up with the ways to improve to make it better next time so that's what he's saying in order for you to be better you should be able to accept criticism let people be open and honest with you and give you honest feedback honest opinion on whatever work that you are involved in on whatever project that you are involved in that's the only way that you'll be able to improve and become better in as much as we love to be praised we love to hear positive feedback it doesn't mean that uh, any work that you produce needs to have negative uh, feedback no it you could have produced a very nice piece of work but uh, so that's good you can receive that good feedback but always have people that can always be open always give that platform for people to be able to give you uh, um, criticism so that you'll be able to have areas that you can improve and become better at the things that you are already doing and become a better person and become a, a better at whatever thing that uh, you you are doing and he he says um, I like I liked it he said never never blame anyone whatever you are let's say you're in a project for example you're working at work as a team or a, the fact that you are involved in it if it doesn't turn out right never find yourself trying to blame the next person if, even if it was the next person that uh, made this project go in the way that it ended up going never find yourself pointing a finger at another person because a project as long as you were involved in it if it doesn't work don't even don't even try to put a blame on the next person the fact that you were involved in it and it didn't work take full responsibility you know even if it means taking it for the team take full responsibility that's the only way that way you are able to learn and be able to find ways that you can do it better next time but if you blame the next person you are not going to find out ways that you can become better you're not going to find ways that you can improve so that the next time that you're engaged in another in a similar project on a or a totally different project you become you become better or you, you do it in a better way even if it wasn't you that uh, made a blunder is as long as you were part of the project be the bigger person take responsibility don't uh, blame anyone and uh, I think the final point that I'm going to share that I learned from the book is that don't uh, don't over promise <laughs> don't promise things that you can't deliver it's uh, it happens a lot around us like um, I know you 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 could be in a position where you really want to sell something so you end up over promising your um, the things that you're going to deliver and at the end of the day you don't deliver on the things that you want to deliver always be upfront on your abilities and your capabilities when you're approaching the next person or, um, or you're selling something always always be upfront because what happens more often than not you might uh, get that deal and under deliver and the people may not really tell you that my my guy you made a mess you you made a blunder or it was not up to expectation because you were not upfront you didn't tell them that what you're able to deliver you over promised they won't they might not tell you they might not come up to you and tell you that no this is not really what you promised but you know what you have done you have um, you've made it you've actually made a blunder because you are not gonna get to repeat business most successful business you find out the uh, the large part of their business is that they do on a regular basis is repeat business it's because of what they have what they delivered before they are called again for another uh, for another engagement 
they are delivering the same products again but if you over promised before and you didn't deliver you find out that the the client is gonna go to the next person your client is gonna go to the next competitor because you did you promise what you couldn't deliver so don't over promise do that which you can if you work on your capabilities there are people that are willing and ready to buy at the level where you are so don't over promise and jeopardize your reputation they might not tell you but they're not you are guaranteed that they're not going to come back to you for a business again and you don't want that you don't want to be in that place where you are cons constantly going after new people when you could actually be capitalizing on the people that you've met today on the people that you've been engaged with today on the people that you've met business with today so it, it's up to you once you get to engage with someone tell them about your proper capabilities and the weaknesses that you could be you could face or that uh, that you have in in your service delivery and how you intend to curb it that way you are guaranteed that you uh, you will retain even if you deliver beyond that it's better to deliver beyond the expectation or the promises that you have that way you are guaranteed of another engagement again next time that's how you your business growth that's how you become a better person so that's where some of the principles that i got from the book it's not how good you are it's how good you want to become essentially so thank you so much for joining remember to like subscribe comment and share what you think um on this video thank you so much for watching and following justin reese i love you all bye